Greetings, friend. This is the last and hardest classic Sudoku from round six of the 2023 Sudoku Grand Prix. When they do scoring, the easier puzzles like puzzle one got like 15 points allocated. If you solve that puzzle, you get 15 points. In contrast, puzzle five, the one right before this, was worth 31 points. So twice as much, a little more than twice as much as puzzle one. This puzzle, if you're able to solve it and put the correct solution, you got 53 points. So that's huge. That's more than that first and fifth puzzles put together. And they decided to put a nice little X wing in here somewhere. So it's a little trickier. I'm going to show you how to find and get to that X wing. There are a few other strategies you got to put in place for it to work. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, let's focus on these twos. I got twos there. And a two right there the only place left for a two in block nine is right here now let's move on to the threes you might see as you got a three here in row four three in row five and this three in column three so you can solve for a three right there leaves only two places for a three up here in block one so what i just did is call Snyder notation anytime in a three by three block you get two possibilities for a candidate mark that in case you solve one of these cells you can solve the other right away or it gives you a clue for some more bad solving so i'm about to show you right now if you look here in columns eight and nine you have threes so the only two places for a three are right there in block three this is called uh, a mini x-wing is what simon anthony likes to call this and since you already have a three here we're gonna put the threes right there and they act as what's called a claiming pair which means the threes gotta be somewhere in row Two, they're limited to block two as well, and so they can't be anywhere else within that block. Okay, let's turn our attention back to column two here. We have a two, three, five, seven, eight in the column. You also have a one, four, and a nine right here. That means this cell has to be a six. It's a naked single. Nothing else can be there. And then that leaves us with a one, a four, and a nine. You got the one and the four right here, so we know this cell has to be your nine. I have a four right here. That means this has to be your one, and this is going to be your four. So you can solve all of that rather quickly. All right, after doing that, now we can focus on these fours. Okay, you might notice that you have four here, here, and there. So the only place for four and block two is right there. And with these two fours and this four, you can solve for a four right here. And now with these two fours and these two fours, you can solve for a four right there. And the last place for a four, because of these three fours, it's got to be right there. So we solved all of the fours doing just a little cross hatching. And you want to get faster at finding these claiming pairs and Snyder notation and cross hatching. Then check out my Sudoku solving guide. You can download it for free at the pinned comment below. And while you're at it, consider checking out my Buy Me Coffee page. I put exclusive content on there, as well as ways that you can support me to help make better content for you. All right, let's look at these fives. You got this five here and this five here. It means the only place for five, and block two is right there. Nice. And then let's look at the sixes now. You got these two sixes and this six. So we can solve for six here. And then with these two sixes, You got two places for a six in block five. Uh, and then with the sixes here and this six, you can solve for six right there. So we made a little marks on the sixes. You actually have two possibilities for six here as well. All right, so I did a little Snyder marks on the six, solved a couple of those. And then with the sevens, what you might notice is you have this seven cutting across here. Uh, and there's only a five, seven, nine that can be in this block. So that's a naked triple. And so we can eliminate the seven from right there. But what it does is now these sevens, since they're limited to column one here in the block seven, and they have to be somewhere in block seven, a seven can't be anywhere else along column one. So this is a pointing pair. I can remove the five from there. And so now we know that sevens can't be here. The only two places for seven are right there. So we'll mark that with our Snyder notation. Okay, I think we can find a couple of ones now. All right, you got this one here, so one can't be there. Because of this one, a one can't be here. So the only place left for a one up here in block two is right there. Nice. Now let's look in column eight. Since we just put this one there, there's no one that can be there. 
And then a one can't be here or here because of these two ones, and it can't be here because of this one. So we can actually solve this cell now for a one, which allows us to solve this cell for a six, and that cell for a six as well, removing those Snyder notation marks. Nice. All right, now let's look up here. There's something interesting going on in row two. You might see is that you're missing four candidates, right? You're missing a two, three, seven, and a nine. Well, a two is right here. It covers both these cells. And you have three is right there. That squeezes the seven and nine to these two cells. So those are a naked pair. You have to find this naked pair if you want to make a little more progress here. Because this is a naked pair, and seven nines are restricted to those two cells in the row. They're also restricted in the block. That means that the two and the three have to be at these two cells. So the two to three is right there, which means the only remaining cell in block two has got to be a seven. So we can solve that now for seven. And with this seven, nine here, you can solve these three cells are going to be a one, three, eight. So we made some restrictions there. And this is the part where the puzzle gets a little bit harder. So you're going to want to see if you can find these restrictions, put some by value cells in to help you do some of the solving. All right, after doing that, we want to fill in block six uh, because you have five candidates filled in. We've made a lot of progress here. So I think to get more progress, we're going to need to know what's here in block six. You got a one, two, three, four. You got a six. So you need a five, seven, eight, nine. What you might notice right here is that there's a five and a nine looking at this cell. Okay. And then right here, you got a five and a nine looking at this cell. So we can eliminate the five and a nine. All right. Hopefully you see this is a naked pair. Okay, nice naked pair, and that means the 7 and 8 are living in those two cells. So we can actually eliminate the 7 and 8 from these two cells. And since we have a 9 right there, we know we can solve this for a 5 and solve that for a 9. Nice. And now we can actually solve the 7 and 9 up here. Nice. So that's how those naked pairs fit in. And so you got to find these naked pairs, like the hidden pair type. Uh, cells if you want to make progress in a harder puzzle like this. So what do we have left? We got a 1 8 here. We got a 7 8 here. And then what you're looking for is a 1 7 8 9. So a 1 7 8 9 there. All right. Can't have an 8 in there. And we can't have a 7 cutting across. Okay. So you're looking at that going, wow, Timberlake really can't do much more solving. So we got the seven and nine up there. We're actually are set up for what you need to do next. So there you have some opportunities, some things that you can try to do. For example, one, you can start filling in the block. So row, column, or house that has, you know, five or six or more cells filled in. So like column four here, you'll notice you got a one, three, four, five, six, nine. So we need a two, seven, or eight in these three cells. All right, you'll notice that seven can't go there. Two can't go here, but a two seven eight can be in those three cells. Okay, now that didn't really help us much, right? So now the other thing you can do is you try to look for single candidate strategies. And so we're getting up to the point where you need the advanced strategy that's going to get you through this puzzle. When I first solved this puzzle, this is the part where I got stuck and I had to find it. So the X wing. Let's see if we can find one. All right, let's check out these candidate fives. Where can the fives go in this puzzle? All the possibilities for a five. I'm going to mark those in green. I'm trying to do a little better on the color coding. So singles, candidates, I'm going to put in the green. Now you notice this is the possibilities for a five in this puzzle at this point. You notice right here in column one and column six that the fives are limited to the same two rows, rows four and eight. What this means is that Either a five is here, right? The five is there. These two cells couldn't be a five, and this would have to be a five. If it's not there. This is not a five. This cell would then have to be a five. These two cells couldn't contain a five, and a five would be right there. So you either have a five here and here, or here and here. You see how I kind of cross over? This makes a Sudoku X wing. And this is awesome. This is what you have to find. It's hard to find when you're doing pencil solving. In the Grand Prix, you're not allowed to use computers. you got to use pencil solving. So this can be pretty difficult. And what it means is we can eliminate all the other fives along row four and row eight. 
Those are the, called the cover sets because we just saw the fives have to be in the blue squares. And so where are we going to eliminate a five is right here. And you're going, well, well, now what can that cell be? Well, now it can only be a two or an eight. And this is huge. Now we can pair it up with this other two or eight. And if you're just not familiar how X wings work, check out my tutorial right here. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies and you will solve X wings even better. One last thing to point out is that you could have went across these rows to find an X wing, rows six and seven, and it would have the same result. You would be eliminating down the column and you'd still eliminate the five from the same place. If you saw that, congratulations, you are getting really good at spotting these X wings. Okay, so let's eliminate the colors, get out of color mode, and see what else we can do with this solve. So you have a two and an eight here, that is gonna be a nice naked pair for us. There can't be a two and an eight anywhere else along row eight. So now this cell has to be a seven, which means this is an eight and this is a seven. And then we got this, seven, this eight coming across here. We have a two and a seven left. Well, these sevens are pointing pair. It means that has to be your two, and that's going to be your seven. We get rid of that Snyder mark. Nice. All right. What do we have left in here? Five and an eight. Well, I got an eight right there. So here's your eight, and here's your five, which would give us a seven and eight to finish row six. I already have a seven here. So here's your seven, and here's your eight. Now we can disambiguate that two eight that we just discovered there. Very nice. We're not done solving yet, so you need to stick around and see what else we have in store here. Okay, with this 8 and 7, that means this has to be a 2, and this is going to be a 5. Now we have this 2 there. We can disambiguate the 2, 3 up there. Love that. Awesome. All right, and now we can look down here, and what do we have left? Looks like a 3 and a 9. I got my 3 here. So here's your 3. Here's your 9. I'm just going to keep working off these cells. I look at the blocks where most of the cells are filled in. That's where I want to focus on first because it's easier to solve that i'm missing a one and a five here i got my five so here's your one and there's your five looking good and now with that five that means this has to be a nine this is your seven and that's going to be your five i got my one and seven here so here's your nine nice and we can get rid of the nine right there so that leaves still a one eight I'm like all right tim like how are we going to get out of this one right well, we're going to go focus on another cell here. Okay, so we only have two remaining here. We know one's a three because of the marks. The other's a nine. Oh, I got my nine right there. So here's your nine, which displaces that Snyder three. Allows us to solve the one and the three here. Now we can do the eight, one, eight combo. Awesome. And two cells remaining. I don't see a one. The only place left for the one. And the last digit is a two. Check out this video to get a different take on the strategies required for a Puzzle 6 in the Grand Prix. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I'd really appreciate it, and thank you so much for watching.